What's up, Baratunde here, and I am uh, I'm feeling good about Kamala Harris, who I voted for. I'm feeling good about her closing argument, which really got me fired up and ready to go. And I wanted to add to it. I wanted to add, she, nobody asked me to do this. I'm just volunteering. I wanted to add a closing argument, not just for her, but for us. And why I think a vote for her is a vote for us and a vote for Earth and a vote for life of all kinds. If you've been appreciating uh, my contributions, mild as they've been to this election cycle and the story of it, you can find me on election day on Amazon Prime with Brian Williams. I used to kick it with him on the 11th hour when he was on MSNBC. That's how we've referred to it. Baratunde kicks it with Brian Williams on MSNBC. And now he's doing this special and I'll be a part of it with James Carville and Tara Palmieri and other very smart people. My plan is uh, tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from on this, like what my lens is, uh, apply that lens and talk about these three main areas that have informed my decision that I think might affect how you think about and how we all process and talk about this moment. And then whatever's on my mind at the end. A closing argument in three chapters plus some bonus chapters. Chapter zero. Who am I? <laughs> Girl, up, sugar. I'm Baratunde. I tell stories, a lot of my own, some of other people's. All of my stories are grounded in interdependence. And I'm exploring how we relate to each other, to nature, and to technology. That's my purpose. That's what I'm here to do. And it can be on the page or on a stage, on, on a mic or on TV, uh, right here with you right now. The spirit of this video and this offering is interdependence, is the idea that we need each other, that we have been sold a bill of goods when it comes to our separation from each other and from nature in particular, and that we got to become more of a we and less focused on just the me, myself, and I. So I invite you to, to, to listen, to put your headphones in and mow your lawn, to swaddle your kid. Uh, We're going to be here for a little, little moment. So chapter one is about how we relate to each other. If, in, in the project world that I often think, and this is How to Citizen. This is the podcast that we launched four years ago, where citizen is a verb. And, and it's about more than just voting. It's about how we show up and participate. It's about how we commit to the collective and not just our individual selves. It's about how we understand power. It's about investing in relationships with each other, with ourselves, with the planet. So with that hat on, with the how to citizen hat on, democracy is a practice. As, as my friend John Alexander says, democracy is something we do, not something we have. Now we both say it. I don't remember who came up with it first, but I think it was him. <laughs> When I think about that, and I think about the choices before us, at every level, but particularly at the presidential level, who's gonna support citizening? Who's gonna support us governing ourselves? Who's gonna support us relating to each other so that we can manage these finite collective resources in a good way, right? In a way that serves the most as well as possible. Kamala Harris, right? Low bar set by uh, the fact that she counts votes and encourages people whose job it is to count votes to do that. And she accepts the results of elections. She doesn't foment distrust and discord about how our elections operate and who should even be participating in them. No, that, that's Donald Trump's game. January 6th, the insurrection, the all preceding misinformation, him and his boy Elon just out there lying on all of us. So that's that. Uh, Kamala Harris will listen when we disagree. Again, I shouldn't have to brag about this, this, but this is a huge selling point. It's a huge selling point. When it comes to dissent and protests, Kamala Harris has a spectrum, an acceptable range of behavior between tolerance and engagement, right? Donald Trump has a different range on this. His range is derision and ridicule to violence and imprisonment. He's demonstrated it and announced further intentions in this direction. We don't have to guess about this. So on the low bar front of citizening, Kamala Harris wins, but I believe in raising the bar. All right, I wanna be better than not throwing people in jail or unleashing a national guard on them. 
for holding a protest. I want someone who will encourage me to relate to my neighbor and the other humans in my life in the right way. I want someone who's gonna model that behavior. I want someone who's gonna remind me of my connection, not insist on my separation. Donald Trump, is, is, his narrative is all us and them. He's always finding someone else to blame, even when he's clearly to blame. It's ne he never owns anything. And when he's supposed to be working for us, he's working for himself. He doesn't understand the concept of we. And those are the first words in some of our founding documents. It's we the people, not I the president. If this nation was intended to be about the president and the I, the founders would have written it that way. It's about we. And to put it bluntly, metaphorically, and probably actually, Kamala Harris has a bigger we than Donald Trump. She includes more people, he excludes them. He's picking on a Haitian this week and a Puerto Rican the next week and someone who's that willing to that quickly kick someone out and put them in the other group, he's gonna put you in that group soon enough. His we is too small and we pay the price for that because there's so many of us who are not a part of his we. And we need someone who is gonna be much more inclusive about who we are and how we expand that in a healthy way, in a just way, in a moral way. That is hands down Kamala Harris. Donald Trump only knows first person singular. We need first person plural. That's Harris. I've been so consistent on this point, I don't, the idea of saving democracy doesn't move me because democracy is a vague thing. But the idea of promoting behavior that allows us to govern ourselves and relate to one another in a healthy way does. The idea of having leadership that encourages me to exercise power with my neighbors and my coworkers and my colleagues, that does. And citizening and democracy don't just happen in the ballot booth, they happen at work, they happen at church, they happen on your block. And so we have to ask ourselves, who is gonna encourage us to be in good relations with the people on our block, in our houses of worship, in our places of work, versus who's gonna dig into the acrimony, who's gonna draw more lines, build more walls between us, turn us against one another. Donald Trump is in Project 2025, have promised a vindictive, revenge-focused police state, promised the return of stop and frisk, promised qualified immunity, gets unqualified, just total immunity for police to do whatever they want. Has promised to make civil service jobs be based on political favor and allegiance to him. What does that do? That, that turns something that's supposed to belong to all of us into something that belongs to him. And then if you're not on the in group, then you're an enemy within, which is what he calls us, what he calls immigrants, what he calls anyone who's not in that group. And when the full apparatus of the state is operating on behalf of one person, then the full power of the state can be wielded against all persons on their behalf, which means now you're worried about if your neighbor's gonna rat you out. Ask anybody who lives in a more authoritarian place or lived there and then came here to escape that. That is not democracy. That is not helping us relate to each other, to turn us against each other, to, to rat each other out. I think you feel it. I don't have to make this case very strongly. Chapter two, how we relate to nature. You might know my work as a TV host of a show called America Outdoors with Baratim Day Thurston. Uh, on PBS, I've been honored to travel this beautiful land, this country, and find people deeply connected, not just to each other, but to the natural world around them. Folks get real proud of their rivers and their streams and their lakes and their mountains and their valleys and their deserts, all of it. Some deep part of us knows that we are part of nature, not apart from nature. I always love Dudley Edmondson for giving me that line, sharing that on the show. I've used it so much. We've lost that connection. And so I'm asking who is gonna help us restore our connection to the natural world? Donald Trump or Kamala Harris? 
I mean, when it comes to just the matter of climate change, uh, pretty clear. Trump doesn't believe it exists and is not willing to do much, if anything, to battle it. In fact, he would just encourage it. He wants to engage in more activities, remove more rules that make the effects of climate change happen faster. That's insane. That's, that's, he's driving toward the fire with all of us in the bus. Kamala Harris clears that bar. Again, low bar, cleared, believes in climate change. Check, shouldn't be a big deal, is a huge deal. We all have been affected by this and know people who have lost property, lost lives because of these changes. Lost connection, lost food sources, lost job opportunities because the river's not where it used to be or there is no river anymore because the salmon aren't where they used to be or there's no salmon or there's no lobster. That's what I mean by relating. Like we are attached to these things and we have allowed ourselves to forget that natural connection that we have. You see nature just as this economic resource to mine and strip and extract and monetize. And that's not been good for our health, literally. You see climate change, but also loneliness epidemic and also uh, asthma and also so many other health concerns, physical health, mental health, financial health. Because we've been doing things in an unsustainable way. There's no long-term economy. And if you're annoyed by rules and regulations on climate stuff, Imagine how much more expensive everything is when everything's burning or flooded at the same time. When the well dries up and the livestock die off. And we've got to get back into connection. And the beautiful news, there's always beautiful news, is that that way of being never really went away. That there are people who live in a much more natural way, that there's indigenous people who, despite all colonial efforts, have maintained so much of that connection. They have this phrase, the Lakota and many others, all my relations, literally feeling related to all these other life forms. So who's gonna take care of our family better? Who's gonna improve on our relationship with nature, Trump or Harris? It's gonna be Harris. She has a climate justice plan. She has, uh, with Biden, expanded more protected areas made the largest investment through the uh, Inflation Reduction Act in, in climate solutions than anyone ever, right? Globally unprecedented, but also marine protected areas. I mean, there's just, and, and the economic opportunity that comes from that, here's the thing, this is what I've seen with my own eyes. It's not just like people want to protect trees so humans have nothing to do with it. There's money there. There's money in them, their trees, if we let them live because they will clean this air for us and then we don't have to run so many filters because they will encourage a level of biodiversity which makes our food healthier, which makes our air healthier, which makes our mentally healthier, which means I have to go to the doctors and take so many damn drugs, but also drives literal cash exchange and tourism and adventure sports and uh, all kinds of activity and, and even regenerative mining, which is the thing I learned about in Arkansas. That story's out there. Right? There's, a, there's a whole new economic model possible. But Trump's not interested in new economic models. He's interested in, in payback. He's interested in paying back uh, the people who've hooked him up. He's interested in kickbacks. And he's interested in quick cash and staying out of jail. Kamala Harris has demonstrated that she is for the people. That's her whole thing. And I think she's much more for the planet as well. So vote Earth. You know what I'm saying? Vote, vote for planet Earth. Vote climate. Vote Kamala. All right. Last chapter. Technology. Our relationship with technology. What is, why is that in here? Because I, I like computers because my mom was a coder and a hippie, crunchy, outdoorsy, political person all rolled up in one. We can be more than one thing. But because we are we're playing with a lot of power when we're playing with technology. It's not just technology. <clears throat> it affects how we operate and interact, how we relate to our family, our friends, our loved ones, our kids, our bosses, our money, our psychology. And social media has taught us what it means to let this power move through our society with no rules, really. No oversight, no controls, no input. 
from we the people. We can't do that again. And Donald Trump doesn't care about regulating these things. He was, he was for TikTok, he was against TikTok, and he's for TikTok only in so much as it affects him personally because his we is too small. But Harris, I mean, we see how she takes the power in them Senate hearings when she was a senator. She has helped oversee and push forward types of rules and legislation around social media for these kids today. Gun violence as well, getting some of the first things passed there in the Biden administration. But there's more. AI is gonna do more. I have this new show, Life with Machines, and we're exploring the human side of what AI means. You should check that out. And I had a recent conversation with Verity Harding, uh, who worked in government, then worked at Google DeepMind, developing these models early on. But she was there to help them think about governance and how this fits into society or doesn't. And we need more of those types of thinkers and participants. We need more of us involved. And Harris will support that. You know that Kamala Harris was so instrumental in helping create the AI Bill of Rights that came out of the Biden White House, the executive order that came out of the White House. Those things aren't the whole answer, but they are part of the process we need to get to, which is to engage with all of us because we're all experts in our own lives and our lives are being affected by this stuff. Trump don't care. Trump wants to rip rules off of everything. He doesn't adhere to any rules himself. And he doesn't want his government to be hindered or his business friends to be hindered. So there's that. But wait, there's more. The deep thing for me about AI is that it's just us. That's what, that's what Verity said in our recent episode. AI is us. And I thought about it and I was like, this is so literally true. These large language models behind generative AI have sucked in so much of us. We are just looking at ourselves in a mirror when we look at AI. What do we want to see looking back at us? Who's going to model that? What model of leadership do we want AI reflecting back to us? The Trumpian model or the Harris model? Do you want a model of uh, revenge obsession, of total self-interest, of first person singular? Do you want a more, a bigger we? <laughs> you want someone who's gonna help bring this new entity, this synthetic life form into the world. My friend, Dr. Sam Rader says we're, we're raising AI. Who do you want to be raising AI? You want Donald Trump to be raising AI? You want Kamala Harris to be raising AI? Who you wanna raise your own kids? I mean, there's, there's the A-B test. Who you want raising your kids? Trump or Harris? And some of you say, nah, I don't want none of them around my kids. But seriously, they call her Mamala. I'm going with Kamala. It's a binary choice here. Mamala, way better parent energy than Donald. Despite the fact that he's a biological parent, she isn't, and yet I trust her parenting more. Of the kids in our society, because she actually cares about gun violence and climate change and an inclusive economic roadmap for the country, but also because of the influence on technology that that mindset will have on everything we touch. Add to the fact that she's from the Bay. She represented him in the Senate. She prosecuted out there like she grew up there, was a child there. She understands the people more than most and more than Trump who are behind these innovations and magical possibilities and possible harms that are involved in AI. And that's gonna serve all of us to have someone like her in that position. So yes, 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 those are the three main chapters. But there's like one more, <laughs> at least one more. I think about what it meant to vote for her as a man, right? to vote for this woman, not just any woman, this hyper-qualified woman. Keith Boykin said it so plain and so true at the Black Men's Summit on BET. She served at local, state, and federal levels of government. Very few can say that. She served in the three branches, right? executive as vice president, judicial as a prosecutor working in the court system there, and legislative as a senator. She has been the most well-rounded possible choice we've had, maybe ever, maybe ever. She's so qualified. And she's this woman who for me as a man gives me a chance to say to our system, to say with my vote, which is a piece of my energy and myself, I see you, I appreciate you. 
I'm here talking to you and you're listening to me in part because some woman poured something into me. A lot of women, actually. My mama, Arnita Thurston, my sister, Belinda Thurston. But I'm here because women poured into them. And I had teachers and I had nurses and I had caretakers and I had neighbors and I had aunties and godmamas looking out, asking for nothing in return, often being overlooked, overshadowed, underpaid the whole time. And Kamala's dealt with that too. Just for a second, think about everything she's had to put up with and the faces she's had to put on to be where she is and still be herself. It's almost impossible. In honor of that, I vote for her. In honor of all the women who've had to do that, I vote for her. And then in particular, as a black woman, I vote for her. Because I think about my own lineage. I think about what black women have done for the Democratic Party and, and for America, for the civil rights movement and for America and the world. Bearing so much, being acknowledged and compensated so little. And Kamala is a part of that story. But she's not just a black woman. She is a woman of South Asian descent as well. And that matters to me for a reason I haven't, I don't know that I've heard too much about this, but maybe someone incepted it into my mind. So I won't take credit as a fully original idea, but I will say that it's meaningful to me that she is the child of colonization. She is a woman born to someone from India and someone from Jamaica. Mm. Women who live in societies that have been colonized bear a special weight. The colonizer seeks to destroy sense of self, seeks to break family connection, destroy ritual, religion, language, education, nutrition, all these things that women tend to tend to and to destroy women themselves, to weaponize sex, to destroy the colonized. And when people make it through that, when a people makes it through that, it is so much due to the women who held it down and kept things together and gave birth to new people, supported those new people when they were here, carried forth the language and the legacy and the ritual and the ceremony and all the parts that it takes for Kamala to come from that means a lot to me. It's not determinative. I'm already gonna vote for her because she counts votes. But man, it's just some nice icing on the cake. Because this country that we're in right now, we are in need of some post-colonial healing, some re-indigenizing energy to get back in touch with nature, with a, a deeper, truer story of who we are and where we're from and our connection to each other. We've been this nation of laws that has never upheld its own treaties with all the indigenous nations here. Speaking of right relationship, that has been very wronged and needs to be restored in the best way possible. Who's going to be in a position to do that more? Kamala Harris or Donald Trump? Harris. You already see what the Biden-Harris administration did in appointing Deb Holland to Secretary of Interior. It makes a difference. Even Biden's acknowledgement of the residential schools program makes a difference. Action needs to follow. Acknowledgement is a step. Yeah, so Kamala being the president. And then I just, I get out of analysis mode. I'm just like, this will be better. This will feel better. Not everyone's going to be happy, but there's, there's misery and miserableness awaiting so many more with Trump because that's what he does. He, he enjoys that. He feeds off of that. He loves the chaos. I don't. That's not what we need. The deep truth is, regardless of who wins, we are going to end up in the better place. There is a new story emerging, and we will get there. The question is how long and how much suffering? How long and how much suffering? You want to take the express route? You want to go on some detour through the 1950s and the 1930s? to get to your future. I say, let's just go straight. We don't got time to monkey around. The earth is getting a little fed up with us. We don't have time to add years on climate change. 
our democracy crisis and our frame. I don't have time to be so at odds with you and vice versa. We need to get about the mending and the healing and the relating. This AI, it's not going to wait. It's not going to wait. It's going to exploit us if we have an exploitive leader modeling that behavior for us. So that's it. That's what I got. It's 27 minutes. Good Lord. I don't even know if this file will, will upload. <laughs> but I thank you if you made it this far. I wish I could offer you a bonus. Yeah, I'll see you before, during, and after. There's always an after. We will count these votes. We will play out this process. We will live. We will find each other. We will find the best in each other. See the light in each other. Don't obsess over the fear and the what ifs and the oh my gosh. There's a lot of oh my gosh. But there's us. I hope this has been helpful.